Turn these four squares into a daisy block using just a square ruler. This is my Miss Daisy quilted to go pattern. She looks fresh with a white background and stunning with a black background. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make one daisy block, but if you're interested, the pattern is available as a PDF purchase on our website. You can make any size quilt that you like. This quilt here is a lap size quilt. I've used 16 blocks. Behind me is a single bed quilt and I've made 30 blocks and you can also make a double bed quilt using 36 blocks. Now believe it or not this quilt is perfect for a beginner because there are no tricky seams that you need to match up. It's quilt as you go so you're quilting each square at a time and it just has simple straight line quilting that anyone can do with a walking foot attached. Now if you are a beginner I do recommend starting with the lap size quilt. To make one daisy block, take four eight inch squares. You want to have two of the same color and two background. And we're going to stack them all on top of each other. This is very important. They must all have the right side facing up. Just like that. Now the next step is to mark where we want our daisy petals to go. First of all, we want to mark where we're going to slash through our squares. Now we're going to start at one corner and we are going to make a mark that is half inch away along this edge and then half an inch away from this edge. On the opposite corner, make some marks that are three and a quarter inches away from the corner along the top edge and three and a quarter inches away from the bottom edge. Next, take your ruler and we just want to connect those marks that we've made and we're going to cut through like that and we're going to make another cut aligning our other two marks. Next take the two top background fabrics which are our white and place them on the underneath just like that. Now what that has given us is four layers that we're going to now sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. To sew the pieces together, thread up with a neutral colored thread. I have a size 70 needle on and my quarter inch foot. And I'm gonna sew the pieces together with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. So we often hear that term a lot, a scant quarter inch. And a scant quarter inch is basically just, you know, a little tiny bit smaller than a quarter of an inch. So to do this, I'm going to take my first two pieces from off the stack. I have a side piece and a center piece, and I'm going to put them right sides together. And I'm going to align the very corners at the top and at the bottom edge like that. And I'm just going to sew now with my quarter inch, my scant quarter inch, as I mentioned. I'm going to sew all the way off to the bottom and I'm just going to continue sewing all of these pieces, this side edge together. So once again, I have a pink center and a white on the outer edge, lining up my corners at the top and at the bottom. And when I sew my scant quarter inch seam, all I'm doing is just holding it back slightly from the guide on the edge of my quarter inch foot. I'll now separate them all. And then I'm going to place them back in order again. Open them out. I'm gonna have a white on the bottom, another white in the center, and then I'll go back to my two pinks in the center. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna turn the block around and I've got my pink in the center and I'm just going to sew all of my side edges onto my center again. So basically that's going to give me um, two squares with pink in the center and two squares with white in the center. Press all of the seams towards the darkest fabric. Now a trick for this is to press the seam. So they call that setting the seam and then flip over and press so my seam will be going towards the darkest color so in this case all of my seams will be going towards the pink press on the dark side and flip over making sure that we don't have any creases in our seams 
this is going to give you two funny looking squares with white in the center and two funny looking squares with pink in the center. Your pieces should now measure slightly more than seven inches. So we're going to trim them all to seven inch squares and to make a little bit of a shortcut I'm going to trim two at a time. So I'm going to take one with a white center and then I'm going to take one with a pink center and stack them on top of each other and you'll see that they just link in nicely because the seams are facing in opposite directions. Then I'm going to take the ruler and just position it with the number one in the top top right hand corner and just locate where your seven inch line is and you'll see that your piece should just be a little bit bigger than that. So that's going to be just a fraction off each edge that I'm going to trim. So just popping my ruler on top like that, trimming the side and if you can manage, trim straight across the top. Now spin your piece and position it so that you have your straight edge on the left hand side and on the bottom edge and then all you need to do is locate your seven inch line on your ruler and line that up with the trimmed edges and same thing again, trim up the top and trim across the side and that gives us our two seven inch pieces. Trim the other two pieces in exactly the same way. Now arrange your four blocks to form a daisy shape. Next step is to join those four pieces together. So we're going to separate, we're going to join our top two together and then we're going to join the bottom two together. Press the seams towards the darkest colour. You can set the seam if you like. Now sew the top and bottom together, aligning the centre seam. You'll see that they'll be positioned in opposite ways. And so we're just going to pin that together before we sew the seam. So this time when we press our seam, we want to still press towards the darkest colour. So on this side, we are going to press towards our pink. And then on this side, we're going to also press towards the pink. So our seam is going to have a twist in it. And then just press flat in the middle and then that will give you the twist on the underside there like that. So that's the start of our daisy block. Something I wanted to mention is when you are trimming up your seven inch square, you're not actually lining up with any of the seams. You're basically just trimming a seven inch square because as you can see, nothing actually really needs to line up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cover that center with a circle in, I'm using a yellow fabric for this one. There are different ways to make a turned edge applique circle. I'm actually just going to go the old fashioned way and use some cardboard from a cereal box and the pattern has got the template shapes in here so I've just found a mug that is the same size and this one here is um, going to be a quarter of an inch bigger all the way around the edge. So what I have done is I've cut a circle in cardboard in the smaller one and then I have cut a fabric circle using the larger circle. What I've then done is I have just stitched a running stitch around the outside edge of the circle. So the stitches, they're close to the edge and they're about an eighth of an inch apart. And now what I'm going to do is just simply put my cereal box circle in the center and then I'm just gonna pull on the thread. So pull that up nice and tight and then just finish off with some stitches sewn close together. We just want to be able to knot that off. So I normally just do three stitches over and over and that makes quite a nice little secure finish. Once I have that, I'm then going to just give that a press with the iron. And then once that cools, I'll take the cardboard out. Now just out of interest, you can get the same kind of effect using um, you know, Mylar template circles. These are the Perfect Circles by Karen K. Buckley. And that plastic doesn't melt under the iron. But as I said, sometimes you don't have those things in your sewing kit and just cardboard is, is fine to use. So it's just a matter now of having a little 
fiddle with that to remove the cardboard and I'll just snip my thread away also. And you can see that's left us with a nice circle with the edges all turned under. If your fabric was a little bit stubborn, you could also use a bit of spray starch to help those edges stay over. To position the circle to make sure that it's going to be centered, first of all, fold it in half. Now, if you can see the grain line, you would like the grain line just to run down the center of your circle. Fold it in half, pop a pin at the top edge, a pin at the opposite edge, and then fold it back in half the other way making sure our pins are flat. Just to find the centers on the side edges, pop the pins in. And then we're going to position that onto the center of the block aligning those pins with the center seams. And then we're going to pin, pin the circle onto the block. Now one of the problems we can have if we're going to machine sew this circle on, like you could hand sew that on if you wanted to, but um, our circle edges end up being on the bias grain, so that's where you have a little bit of stretch. So just popping more pins in, so one in between each of your pins, that's just going to hold it in place while we sew. I'm going to sew my circle on with a tiny zigzag. So I have my machine set on zigzag and my zigzag has a width of 1.5 and a length of 2. I'm using a matching coloured thread and I also am using a very fine needle. I'm using a size 60 needle because a size 60 needle won't leave large holes when I'm sewing. I'm also going to sew with an open toe foot on. That's going to provide me clear vision when I'm sewing. And I'm lining up the center of the open toe foot with the edge of the circle. Now I'm just going to start with a simple little uh, backwards and forwards stitch there just to secure it. And when I'm sewing, the trick is for this is to sew one stitch on the outside, one stitch in. So it's one in, one out. This is going to give us more of an invisible look. We don't really want to see the stitching. We'll see a little bit of it, but by having a narrow zigzag and sewing one stitch in, one stitch out, it gives a nice, neat finish. This is what our daisy block looks like from the front, and this is what it looks like from the back. Now, we don't need all of this bulk, so we're going to cut that away. So to do that, just pull that up, pull on the circle, and we just want to very carefully cut a little chunk out just to get us started and then cut up towards our zigzag stitching line very carefully and now I'm just going to cut away just leaving a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Time to quilt our Miss Daisy block. Now the finished size of the block is 13 and a half inches so to quilt you're going to need a backing square that is the same size so that's also 13 and a half inches and I'm using the easy cover strip method to join my blocks together so check that out if you haven't seen that video yet I'll put the link in the description. So therefore, with the easy cover strip method, our batting is always cut half an inch smaller all the way around the edge to reduce the bulk in our seams. And then I'm going to lay my block on top of that. So that's my little quilt sandwich. You can hold that together with safety pins or with quilt basting spray. I'm just going to quickly use a little bit of basting spray to hold my blocks together. Now to mark up our quilting blocks. So to mark up your quilting block, make sure that you use a fabric marker that can be easily erased from your fabric. Today what I'm going to use is a Soline Duo marker. This is a double pen set and it is like a texture like that, but then you come along with the other one and that erases that line. So what I'm going to do is, as I promised, simple straight line quilting. We're first of all going to mark a line that is from corner to corner. And we're going to keep it really simple and mark straight through the center of our circle. And then we're going to go back the other way, opposite corner to corner. 
Make sure that all of your layers, as in the back and the top, are nice and level because we won't actually trim these blocks up again unless they end up really wonky. Now mark a line that is an inch and a half either side of your side, on the side edges, either side of the seam. So an inch and a half there, inch and a half there. And then connect those lines. So you want to um, connect one of the lines below the center seam with one of the lines above the center seam. And if everything's nice and straight and even, we should cross through that center point on our circle. If it's a little bit off, you can just fudge that. That's what I do. So I'm going to quilt my lines using this Wonderfill thread. It is um, a variegated thread. It's got a very pastel variegation going through it. And if anyone's interested, it's color 37. And I'm going to use this on the top and on the bottom. It matches my backing fabric quite nicely. And I have my walking foot attached, I have a size 80 quilting needle and my straight stitch with a length of between two and a half and three. That depends on your sewing machine. First of all, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stay with my same coloured thread that I stitched my circle on with, so my pastel yellow, and I'm actually just going to stitch nice and closely around the outside edge of the circle first of all, and then I'm going to change to my pastel um, thread to do the straight line quilting. So to start quilting, I'm first of all going to bring my bobbin thread up to the top. That's just by putting the needle down and up and there's my bobbin thread, needle down. What that's going to do is it um, stops that um, fabric clump when you stop and start with your sewing. And now I'm just going to start with some very small stitches. This is going to keep it nice and secure so I like to go to either 0.2 or 0.4 and I do seven small stitches close together. And then I'm going to go back up to my normal stitch length of three and then I'm just outlining very closely around the edge of the circle. Not stitching on the circle, just close to it. And I'll just trim those threads away or you can thread them through your quilt, depends on what you like to do. And now I'm just going to thread up with my pretty thread and quilt the straight lines. If you feel when you're sewing towards the center that you're having a little bit of a pucker, just use your fingers to push those little ripples towards the foot. So here's our finished quilted daisy block. This is what it looks like from the front and this is what it looks like from the back. Now all I have to do is just come along and remove any of my marking lines that are visible using the special pen that removes the lines. So I joined all of my daisy blocks together using the easy cover strip method. If you would like to see how to do that, you can check out my video on the easy cover strip quilt as you go method. I'll put the link in the description. The Miss Daisy quilt pattern is also in my book, which is called quilt as you go with the easy cover strip method. So there's five different patterns in that book and the Miss Daisy quilt is one of them. If you enjoy learning with me, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel? We have a new Quilt As You Go video coming out every week. And if you don't want to miss a video, click the notification button. Thanks for watching. Bye.